My name's Richard from Scion Peak and welcome to this DxO Photo Lab review, specifically Photo Lab version 6.2 Elite Edition. So we're going to begin this review with a little bit of photo management. So here, photo management view or photo library as DxO calls it, we have the usual file structure in which we can simply click and browse through the various different photos. But more usefully, what you're more likely to do is create various different projects and copy your images into them. So for example, I have test and test two. And moving a photo from project to project is as easy as clicking it and dragging it in to the other project. Now, once you've assembled your project, there's a few things we can do. We can simply browse through our images and it's nice and quick, feels very responsive, pretty much near real time. We've got the options to export these images to various different file formats uh, and also to initiate integration with Lightroom, which I will not be showing you on this demo today. Now, once we have our image, we have various different ways of managing it. So first and foremost, we can rate the picture we're looking at. So this picture is kind of okay. So I can click down here and give it a two star rating. And if we're to look at the image, it looks very mountainous. So what we can do is apply a keyword. So we can say apply keyword and we can put in a mountain and done. Now, the reason why you might add a keyword is of course, you might be looking for all pictures with that particular keyword. So we can go to the search option here we can type in mountain and we can hit enter and select the mountain keyword phrase and retrieve that image. Alternatively, you can search for photos via the data of the image itself. So for example, if I type in Nikon D750, it's gonna list me all of the photos that I have indexed by Photolab 6 that were taken with a Nikon D750. We can also combine our search. So for example, we can have Nikon D750 and we can have Mountain. And there we go. So that's all photos taken with a Nikon D750 featuring the keyword Mountain. While you're in this particular mode, you've got the facility to um, sort of compare edited images. So if we go back to our test, find an edited images, and we can sort of compare the different versions of the image. We can do it that way and we can do it side by side comparison. Now, the other thing we might want to use the management view for is to apply presets. So for instance, we have the apply preset option here on the right. We can apply a preset and then that will take us into an awful lot of presets. So what we have here as well is aside from all the regular presets that you get with any other photo editor, we also have DxO's film pack. And what that means is that we can apply film simulations from the turn of the century right up until contemporary films such as Fuji Classic Chrome, Eterna Bleach Bypass, Provia, Velvia, Kodak, Polaroid, Lomography, anything you can think of, you've got the option here. And it's really a lot of fun. And applying a preset is as easy as finding one that you like, clicking on it, and there we go, it is done. We can also apply any particular edit of any photo to another photo. We can just right click on the photo that's been edited and we can go to, um, copy correction settings and we can apply it here and we can paste correction settings and there we go and I could do that with multiple images as well I would just simply highlight more than one image so let's say that you're unsatisfied with presets or you're unsatisfied with this preset you can simply hit reset and that will restore the photo to its original state so let's do an edit. So we're going to go to this picture of a lighthouse and we're going to edit the old way. We're not going to use a preset. 
So here on the left, we have our two major windows. We have photo library and customize and customize will take us into an edit mode, which will be pretty familiar to any of you who have used any photo editing software. So here on the left, we have our histogram. Now, all of this can be moved around and changed. I won't show you that because we'll be here all day. And we also have our presets. So these are the same presets as we saw before. We can just simply click on those and hit apply and, you know, reap the reward, whatever that might be. I'm going to hit reset to get us back to where we were. And of course, you can save the sum of your own manual adjustments as a preset as well. So you can apply your best work to future edits. So let's get on with it. Normal editing is exactly as you expect. So we have things like the ability to shift exposure. Uh, we have a really nice tool. So well, let me uh, reset that back to normal. We have a really nice tool in DxO Smart Lighting. So if we apply it on a uniform basis, it will sort of review the whole photograph and try and rebalance the light. But I, I much prefer the spot weighted feature. So here we can basically select a particular area of the photo and define the exposure of the photo based on that area. Not too impressive on this particular photo, bad example, I apologize but hopefully you kind of get an idea. And what this will work for is particularly backlit subjects, uh, people taken in front of windows and so forth. We have clear view, which is a really nice way to sort of suddenly boost contrast without you actually having to think about it. We can just switch it on. And if it looks a little bit overcooked, we can also dial clear view back to a more natural state, or you can burn the eyeballs out of anyone who wants to look and dial it right up to max. Have fun guys. Switching on and off any prior adjustment is easy. You would just can click this blue option and that will disable your adjustment or you can click on it and reapply the adjustment as you left it last. So we've got contrast. Contrast works really nice. It is a DxO product. So upon loading any image, it will download the optical module for your camera and lens combination. And that means it corrects sharpening, big netting, uh, chromatic aberration, and a few other things. What it does is it just makes your photo instantly more attractive. It's well worth it. And you do not have to live a finger. So this is all our usual exposure stuff. So tone curves, mi micro contrast, uh, VIG netting, which here is uh, automatically corrected with the optic module that I was just talking about, as you can see on and off. It really does work, guys. Up here, we have our various different tabs. We're going to go to color. Now, again, usual, we have things like white balance, so we can I use our dropper and redefine the white balance, you know, based on whatever we're picking. I'm going to leave that well alone. Uh, we have color rendering. So that basically takes the rendering from um, various different uh, options. Just simply click on them and have a play. One thing I really like is the color wheel. So what we can do here is it can pick a particular color. So let's say um, we're unhappy with the red of the door. We can click on the red and now we can independently adjust that one color without affecting the rest of the photo. So we can increase, decrease the saturation, the luminance, basically making it darker and brighter and the uniformity as well. Again, all good fun makes things a lot easier. Here we have possibly one of the highlights of the product. We have DxO's noise technology. Now this confused the hell out of me when I began using this. Having used uh, DxO Pure Raw 2, I saw Deep Prime XD here, perhaps one of the best noise reduction systems you can get. It's an AI artificial intelligence noise reduction system. And you click on it and guess what happens? Absolutely nothing. You can have the noisiest picture in the world. You click on this and nothing happens to your image because the effect is only applied on export. So when you take your raw file, you apply it to uh, the export, it comes out as a JPEG, and then you will see the effect of the noise reduction. And it is truly terrific. Uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's, you're not going to be disappointed at all. 
And this is an expensive feature that comes packaged with all of this. You know, you, you'll love it, try it. We have lens sharpness, exactly what you expect. So this is sort of DxO's uh, technology. So we can sort of adjust what it thinks is best, to be honest, what it thinks is best often is, but you can manually adjust sharpness, chromatic aberrations, um, and various stuff in uh, more uh, red eye tool, of course. Prop, uh, distortion correction, again, automatic, um, but you can do it yourself. We've got the ability to do local adjustments and mapping. Uh, it's kind of a nice tool. So if we can go into a local adjustment, we can select a particular area and then we can manually sort of target the area we want. And then we've got this option to sort of bounce between sharpness, color, detail. Now I won't lie, this particular local selection masking is very powerful and quite complicated and difficult to grasp. I have spent some time with it a little while ago and I've pretty much forgotten how to use it but on the most basic level you can simply apply it like that you can widen the selection point add different control points it does work but it does take a little bit of getting used to finally we have the watermark effect now this is a nice thing if you're a professional or if you like to post your best work online you can inbuilt your favorite watermarks as many as you like and you can just click from them and it will automatically assign the watermark now that's my watermark it's actually called watermark here don't get confused it's uh, that but you could use a logo you can use any text font you can position the watermark wherever you like very good nice little feature and it's there to be used now one of the things that's really worth mentioning as well is that any one of these features can be assigned to your favorites list so if you um, tend to use the same ex adjustment tools over and over so you like to use white balance and exposure and things like that you can actually have them all racked under your favorites toolbar list and if we deselect that it will actually decategorize them for as well so this is entirely my favorite selection of tools regardless of whether it's exposure or sharpening this is a flat list. I can have everything I want right here without having to bounce through the various tabs. This of course is a matter of preference. You're willing to set this up anywhere that you like. So this is DxO Photo Lab 6 Elite Edition. Overall, a very nice product. The things I like most about it is that it's incredibly responsive, highly customizable. I like the interface, it's easy to use, it's attractive. It responds to my adjustments in real time. I haven't got any disorientated lag that's basically chasing every adjustment that I make. Things I don't like it so much is that compared to some other photo editors I've used, it is rather traditional in the sense that most of the adjustments are manual. You know, we don't have all powerful sliders that will simply automatically recognize the sky and make it look better for us. In that regards, Luminar Neo and similar applications are much further ahead. But then again, with my expertise, I can still do what I need to do. I can do it very fast. And even if you are having a lazy day or you don't care for manual photo editing at all, you do have this absolute wonderful preset library, which is almost untouchable with the various different effects that we can achieve just with a single click. And unlike many other um, systems, they're not awful. You know, the presets are very, very attractive and, um, you know, true to film's heritage as well. So anyway, I hope that was useful. This is DxO Photolab 6.2 Elite Edition. I do recommend the Elite Edition because you get the noise reduction, the DxO Deep Prime AI powered noise reduction and a few other tricks. But for the noise uh, reduction alone, get the Elite Edition. It's well worth the extra money. Anyway, my name is Richard from Silent Peak. Hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think of this video below. If there's anything I've missed or anything I could do better next time, put it in the comments below. Love reading it. Take it easy, guys. See ya. Bye.